Holy shit, it actually worked. Let, let me show you guys this. It's super cool. So, I got my Wi-Fi turned off. Let's go over to google.com, see no internet. And I'm just going to show you what this can do. Do fizz buzz in JavaScript. We would just wait a little bit. Looks pretty right to me. So, we got a local LLM working offline and it's free and works pretty fast on an Apple M1. Let me show you how to set this up. First, go on over to olama.com. Click on download and just choose the operating system that works for you. I'm on Mac OS, so I'm just gonna do this flow. As you can see here, I already got it downloaded for you. Just click save. So once you get the file downloaded, just unzip it. And you got the app right here. Double click on the app. You might get a little security prompt, just click open. So once it's open, all you really gotta do is go through the flow and it'll install everything for you. With this flow, what you're gonna get is the Olama menu bar item, the command line binary, it's gonna be installed to user local bin Olama, the application support files under library application support Olama, and startup items in your system preferences. These are important to note because if you decide to uninstall Olama, you're going to have to manually remove all this stuff yourself. Alternatively, and this is the way I did it, if you just want the command line, you can just use Homebrew. Open up your terminal and type in brew install Olama and just wait for things to finish. All right, we're good. Once you've got things installed, you can run the server by typing in Olama serve. You can see here that it is listening on localhost 11434. This is super important for later when we set up the UI. So keep this in mind. A quick note about what Olama Serve does. This Olama server pretty much handles everything based on REST APIs. You're gonna need this server running for pretty much everything that you need to do. So anything from downloading new models or deleting models, just management of models in general, uh, to making calls and inference on models, you're gonna need this running. It's the same thing as if you're interfacing with OpenAI, their APIs are on the cloud, whereas Olama is running on your local machine. The last thing that we need to do is to get our first model downloaded that we can use for inference. I'll show you how to do this in a bit, but if you go over to the website and you click models, you see that there's a lot of models that you can use. So Llama 3 from Meta, 5 from Microsoft, I don't know what Wizard LM is, Mistro from Mistro, Gamma from I think Google. It's worth it to know you can download as many models as you want, but they will take up a lot of space. So for Llama 3 specifically, the 70 billion parameter model will take 40 gigabytes. The 8 billion parameter model will take 4.7. So that's the one that we're going to use. All right, so going back to the terminal, we're going to type Olama Polama 3, 8 billion, okay? Press enter. Nice, you see that it pulled the 4.7 gigabyte model and it was successful. To be absolutely sure that you downloaded the model, just type Olama list. You can see I have the Llama 3 model that we just pulled, downloaded 27 seconds ago. If you want to remove the model through the command line, just type Olama RM and the model name. Now we're going to install Open Web UI, which is going to be the UI that interfaces with Olama. Open up your browser and go to openwebui.com. This is the landing page to get information on this UI. There are two links of note. One is the docs page. If you click this, you go over to their documentation page. If you click on this download open web UI, you go over to their GitHub repository. It doesn't really matter which you use. You really only need one command. So if we scroll down on this GitHub repository, we hit this section here. All right, so just click copy on this command and we're going to paste it into our terminal. One thing to note is that I personally do not want to map the port to 8080. The reason for this is that 8080 is a pretty common port for a lot of web servers. So if you have a lot of different things that you're playing with, there might be a bit of a conflict. So just erase this and change it to whatever port you want to use. For me, I'm going to use 3333 for this particular UI. Press enter. And you see that it's up and going. After doing a check on the Docker processes, we can see that it's running since a couple seconds ago. Now we can open our browser and go to localhost 3333. Remember that 3333 is what I chose. Put the port in that you chose here. Press enter and you will be met with a login screen. Don't worry about this, just sign up. Everything is local, so you're not giving your information to anyone. Click on sign up 
and just put whatever for your name. I'm just gonna put Fong here for me. And the email is whatever you want it to be. You're gonna be using this to log in locally. So choose something that you'll remember. I'll do a quick test here, one, two, three, at foo.com. And the password will be one, two, three. Create an account. Nice, now we're in. Just a quick side note, if you don't want to use Docker for this, you could clone this repo and then run it yourself. Of course, the configuration and a lot of other setup things is gonna be a bit more complicated. So uh, that's for you to figure out if you wanna go this route. All right, so now that we got Olama and Open Web UI running individually, we're gonna connect them together. Click on this little gear icon over here for settings and go on over to connections. This is where you tell Open Web UI the URL of Olama, which you're hosting locally. Remember before when I said take note of the URL here when we uh, were setting up Olama? This URL is actually what you need to input into Open Web UI. Going back here, we're gonna type in HTTP colon slash slash and paste in this URL. Quick note, depending on how you set up Docker, this may not work for you. If I click refresh here, you can see that Web UI cannot connect to Olama. The reason for this is because you are hosting Open Web UI in a Docker container. So referring to localhost or 127001 within the container itself is not the same thing as your host operating systems localhost. If this doesn't make sense to you, don't worry about it. It's just the way Docker works. I have the solution for you right here. If we take a look at the Docker command that we ran before, we realized that we added a host, host.docker.internal. We're gonna copy this. And we're going to go over here. We're going to remove the 127001 and we're going to paste host.docker.internal into the input. When we click on this refresh button again, you can see that the server connection has been verified. Once you see this message, you're good to go. So click save. Your settings has been saved successfully. Close this modal and we're ready to go. Give the page a little bit of a refresh just in case. Did a refresh? Oh, that was fast. And if you click on select a model, you'll see that Llama 38B is right here. We've pulled this model earlier. Click it and set it as default. And there you have it. You can use any open source model locally for free. Quick check on this. Gonna type hi, enter. The model responds and we know everything is working perfectly. But one more thing. Once you've got everything set up, you can actually go into settings, models, and you can manage all your models right here. So if you wanted to delete a model, you can click on Llama 38B that we pulled earlier and click on the trash can. If you wanna pull another model to play with, just type in the name of it, maybe 5.3, and click on the download button. It says pulling manifest, wait for it to complete. You see the percentage completion here. Gonna skip ahead a little bit, or 100%. Model 5.3 has been successfully downloaded. All right, close this, do a quick refresh. If we click on the model selection button, you can see that 5.3 can be chosen. So we can actually swap on the fly over to 5.3 and start talking to the model. Hi. Very nice. That's it. Hope this was useful to you. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.